So when we look at the scripture that we read, we see that we see the awesomeness of God in that Isaiah 40. God begins to express who he is in that scripture. Hallelujah. He begins to speak of what he is capable of doing. You know, he told us who we are. He said, we are just like grass. We are just like flower. We come out this day, the next day we are gone. But this God, he is faithful, right? He is the one that watches over uh, the flock. He is the good shepherd. Hallelujah. And he's the one that gathered us even here today. And he kept us under his arm. Those are the things that he has been doing. And he will not uh, forsake us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, and he said, who can you compare this God with? Who can we compare? The God that makes way in the wilderness. Who can we compare him with? Right? The Bible says, he speak and the earth melt. Who can we compare him with? Right? The one that sees uh, the end of our, of our life. Who can we compare this God with? So he's a mighty God. Hallelujah. There is no one to compare this God with. There is no one is equal. The equal to God, we don't have that person. And we can never have. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It does not exist. The only thing that they said that, that what God cannot do, that's the frame, right? That what God cannot do does not exist, right? But the person like God does not exist. There's no one like our God. Hallelujah. So when we run down to that um, verse 28, uh, 29, 30, he said, have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the earth, of the earth, the creator of the end of the earth, neither faith nor does he weary. Our God does not faint. He does not weary. It's only we men that grows weary. We men that loses faith because we are not seeing things happening yet. Hallelujah. But he alone knows exactly what he is doing. Hallelujah. He said his understanding is unsearchable. We sang that song this morning. His understanding, you can't comprehend it. Right? He gives power to the weak. And those who have no might, he increases in strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But this is where we're going, the last verse. Let's read it together. 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint. Those who wait upon the Lord, those who trust in the Lord, they shall mount up uh, mountains with wings like eagle. He said they shall run, they shall walk, they shall not faint, they will not be weary. So the topic of today is strength of an eagle. Strength of an eagle. Strength of an eagle. Those who hope in the Lord, he will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Strength. Like an eagle. Strength of an eagle. You know, many times... Jesus will help us to, he will help us to bring out what is teaching with what we can relate with. So he brought about having the strength of an eagle. He brought, he brought up about how this eagle can go miles without being tiring. So when we look at, every one of us, we need strength, right? Even strength to eat and strength to breathe, we need it, right? So in every area of our life, we need the strength. But most essentially, 
is not really about the physical strength, but about spiritual strength. An eagle symbolizes strength. It symbolizes power. It symbolizes vision. It symbolizes boldness. Hallelujah. So briefly, I'm not going to take your time. I'm going to narrate and explain a little bit about this strength in an eagle that we can relate to ourselves. And as God will have it, that this is also what we need to work this year, 2023. Hallelujah. So the three ways we're going to break this down is the vision, the strength, and boldness of an eagle. The vision, the strength, and boldness. Because you can have strength, but if you don't have boldness, it doesn't work. Right? You can have boldness, you can have strength, but you don't have vision, one can fail. Would you agree with me? Hallelujah. So these three ingredients are so essential to us this year that we will walk this year with ease. That will be successful in our journey this year, 2023. So let's quickly go to that vision. Vision. The vision of an eagle. I was going through, I was studying, and uh, you know, uh, Job chapter 20, 39, Job 39, verse 27. It says, It is as your command that the eagle rises with the height to make its nest. From there, it hunts its prey. From that height, it hunts its prey. Keeping watch with piercing eyes. Job 39, 27 to 29. Keeping watch with piercing eyes from that height. The eagle does not have to come down to look for prey. And they will understand that the eagle can fly 10,000 10,000 height, feet height into the sky. And right there, he can see its prey and dive down to take over the life of the, of, of the prey. So this scripture is helping us to understand that keeping watch he's with piercing at its young gulp down blood where there is a carcass. There you will find it. The vision of an eagle vision of an eagle this the vision of an eagle their eyes are so clear their eyes are so no matter how far they are they have clear eyes they have clear vision and also they can see two miles i try to imagine how far two miles is because i can't really really imagine how ten thousand miles is that they can dive down from there Right, but let's imagine two miles. I don't know how far you are from your house, right? But as far as that two miles, they can see clearly. They, 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 they help us to understand that their eyes, they are so big. They are so big and they are as big as their brain, right? That's how sharp, you know, how focused they can be in order to uh, take over their prey. So what are we saying briefly? We're saying that this year 2000 and uh, 2023, we need a clear vision. We need a clear revelation. It's not by sight. Hallelujah. It's not by your physical sight, but by the revelation of the Holy Spirit. He would have shown us ahead of time what is yet to happen? Like I told you, just a simple analogy right now, right? So we need that revelation this year to walk with God. If we don't know where God is going, then we will faint. If we don't know what our future is going to be like, then we will be weary. But if God can begin to unveil to us, begin to reveal to us what we need to know ahead of time, even when it comes, it will not be a surprise because we already know it, we already heard it, and so it's not like a big thing anymore. We don't want us to be like Moses when God revealed to him, 
I said, look at your people. <laughs> look at your people down there. They have gone their own way, right? And he had, God wrote that Ten Commandments with his own hand. By the time he got there and he saw the people, what happened? Oh, God. What he has been there for 40 days, he just crashed it. Revelations are there for us so that we are equipped. Not to, not, not to be angry. Not to be offended. Because he said offenses will come. But when you know that, okay, it's coming anyway. Even if you don't see, you know it's going to come. That's a revelation for you from the word of God. Hallelujah. So our, this year, 2023, one of the... Um, um, resources that is necessary to work this work uh, is our vision, revelation from the Holy Spirit. And I pray that this year, God will give us heavenly revelation in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Quickly, we're going to go to the second, to the second part of it. We we'll talk about vision, and then we we'll talk about the strength of an ego. The wings of an eagle is the strength of the it's one of the strengths of an eagle. Hallelujah. The wings of an eagle. In fact, they called the eagle the master of the skies. There's no other bird that can far fly as high as an eagle. There's no I don't I don't think there's any other bird that can actually also see like an eagle. Eagle is described to be able to fly towards the sun. Right? We know that. That eagles fly towards the sun. That's a strength right there. That's a strength. Ability to fly as high. And this year you are flying high in the name of Jesus. Um, you will overcome every hurdles in the mighty name of Jesus. The, the wings are described to be one of it is about 8.2. Two feet long. You can see, I am just five. So add more three feet. So one of the wings is as long as eight feet. And as heavy as that wing is, it comes to a time that he just slides. Hallelujah. The strength of an ego. The, the wings does not struggle to climb that high. You will not struggle this year in the name of Jesus. The strength to overcome, the strength to overcome all others, uh, the strength to go as high as God has proposed for you and I will receive uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, and also easiness. Easiness. You know, you see some birds even to fly the, 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 like this. <laughs> you know, flapping and flapping. But ego, as heavy as that wing is, it does not flap too much to climb. You receive that strength in Jesus' name. Mm. I'm trying to just cut it a little bit. I think you said 12.30, we're done, right? That's no. one, okay. <laughs> okay. So another thing about this, uh, the strength is, um, let, let, let me go to the third time because I want us to pray, right? The other thing about this, um, the, the ego is they are fearless, right? They are bold. They are bold. Why do we say they are bold? When, when we think about storm, when storm is coming, what do we do? We all run away. We fly to our hiding places, right? But in case when you look at the life of an ego, God is so good. You know, he tried to help us to understand who we can be in him. So when we look at the entire life of an ego, God is saying, this is who you are. This is who I am, right? That we can have visions to see beyond, we can have the strength that we need in him. And he said we can be bold as a lion. When there, there is storm, when uh, there is storm that we all run away from, but in case of the eagle, he flies into that storm. And it is that storm 
the current that helped him, that lift him up to that destination. I say every hurdles that comes your way this year will be a stepping stone to your victory in the name of Jesus. Yeah. This year, God will bear you on eagle's wing in Jesus' name. So they fly with the current. They fly with the current. Where the current is, is where they will, you see them flying. And what does that imply to us? This year also, we must fly with the Spirit of God. We must be sensitive to the Spirit of God. The eagles look for where the current is high. Where the current is frequent. Where the storm is high. So that he can be lifted up. I pray for each and every one of us. That this year 2023. We will not walk by our sight or by our strength. But we will walk in the spirit of the Lord. We will be sensitive to his spirit in the name of Jesus. They are fearless. They are bold. David was so bold, he ran against his enemy. Where others were running away from. I, I, I read something in, 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 um, online about eagles. It says, eagles are fearless hunters. They are fearless hunters. An eagle will never surrender to its prey. You will not surrender to your prey. You will not be fooled in the, in the mouth of your enemy in Jesus' name. He said, no matter its strength or size, no matter the wave they come with, no matter how huge they are, he said, this bird never surrender. You will not surrender to your enemy. He said, it will always put up a fight to win its prey. You will not give up on this journey. Those guys, they were giving up. But you will not give up in Jesus' name. No matter what comes your way, you will not forget God. In the name of Jesus. He said, it will, it, no matter what it is, it puts up a fight to win its prey or regain its territory. <laughs> Put up a fight to regain its territory. I don't know where we have been displaced. It could be in our spiritual life. It could be in our finances. It could be in our home. It could be in our marriages. It could be concerning our, your children. But today, in this year, 2023, you are regaining those things back in the name of Jesus. Um, he said that there is, some of them they call golden eagles. Golden eagles. They are such remarkable hunters that they can carry on much larger prey than themselves by throwing them off to the side of the cliff. So they have a strategy. <laughs> that strategy you need to win this battle in 2023. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. He said no matter how big, no matter how huge that prey is, he said he has a way, he has a strategy to, 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 to pick up that prey because the prey is heavier than itself. So he will take up that prey and throw it against the mountain to overcome it. That wisdom that is necessary for our children to overcome this perverse generation, the Lord will grant to them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So we see the life of, uh, briefly, we see the life of an eagle. And the scripture is telling us uh, in that 40 verse 31, it said, those who wait upon the Lord. Those who wait upon the Lord. How do we wait? We just stand and be waiting. Okay, oh, I'm waiting. No. Is that what God is saying? He said, those who wait upon the Lord, what will happen to them? He will renew their strength. And as their strength is, he said, he will bow them. They will swirl with wings like eagles. When we wait upon the Lord, the Lord renew our strength. It came to a time that Jesus was at, was at the garden of Gethsemane, And he was so weakened in his spirit. He was so weakened, but he prayed. 
And the Bible records that the Lord sent an angel to him to renew his strength. So how do we wait? We wait in prayers. We wait in prayers. But most of us, what we do is fast food prayer. You know, you know how we go to a fast food restaurant on the window? Fast food, we just drive, drive through, drive through. It's drive through, right? Drive through prayer. Father, I just love you this morning. Thank you for waking me up. Okay, as I'm going to go with me, uh, protect my children. Okay, I'll see you later, Daddy. Thank you, Jesus. And we're gone. That's not waiting. Hallelujah. We must be able to set a time apart. When you love someone, you set that time apart to listen to that person, to know that person. When we're waiting upon the Lord, we need to set a time apart from him, apart, apart for him, right? So that we can talk with him. And it is, you know, prayer is a, is a conversation. It's not a one-way traffic thing, right? You, you pray to the Lord and you have a few minutes, you have something to listen. So we don't hear, we don't see revelation because we don't have time to listen. All we are doing is just saying it. Are you hearing God? This is what I want to do. This is where I'm going. It's good. But do you take time to listen? Do we take time to listen? Those who wait upon the Lord, he said, shall renew their strength. He will renew our strength. It is in the waiting period that our strength got to be renewed. And I want to add this. When we talk about the strength, we talk about uh, the boldness, we talk about revelation. I also want to say that how do we receive these abilities that we're talking about? So we talk about prayer. The pr but you say when we pray, what happens? We receive, right? When we knock, what happens? The door gets open, Matthew 7, 7. Right? When we ask, we receive. But we do not receive because why? We do not ask. And when we ask, what will happen? We are acting mummies for our own desires. Right? Most women will pray, my husband, let him do this. Let him do this. Is that the will of God for him? When we pray concerning our wife, I want my wife to be this. I want her. Is that the will of God for that woman? So our prayer must not be according to our own desire, but according to the desires and the will of God. So our prayers sometimes don't get answered. And sometimes when God answers our permissive will, we see that it doesn't end well. So we must have time to pray. Have time to pray. Have time to speak to God. And that... Uh, uh, and, um, that time, that energy that we need, that, that uh, ability just to separate a time for him, the Lord will release into our hands in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, some people say, oh, I, I, I don't have time to, because I have to wake up 5 a.m., I have to get to work, and, uh, you know, and I don't come back home until like 8 and all that, and we have all that excuse, but we all, all have the same time. So whatever time that you can spare, even if it's 30 minutes, use it wisely. And the Lord will assist us in Jesus' name. And he said, pray without season. Pray without season. Another thing that I want us to examine, apart from prayer, prayer is good, but what do we pray about? We say we pray amiss because uh, uh, it's not the will of God, so our prayer doesn't get answered because we pray amiss. So how do I pray? How do I pray? We pray in order to, uh, in order to receive these abilities and be able to fulfill God's promises for our life. Uh, one of the things that we have to do is reading the word of God. Reading the word of God. Because it is in that word that we get revelation. It is in that word that we get strengthened. It is in that word that you get boldness. Hallelujah. So the word of God gives revelation. 
it gives the strength, the boldness, right? And it gives uh, uh, revelation, it gives strength and the boldness that we're asking for. Remember, the ego has this vision. He has the strength and the boldness. And where do we get it from? We get it from the word of God, right? There's some things that, uh, that you think you are the only one going through. But when you look into the word of God, you get strengthened. Sometimes we look at our children and say, oh, my children, my children. When you begin to read all these prophets and this king goes, okay, okay. <laughs> then you relax yourself and say, okay, God, I know you are still in charge. So this is not peculiar to me. But you are able to make a way. Hallelujah. When, when you are being offended, everybody is offending, offending you every time. Every time everybody is offending you. And you see in the scripture that says, uh, yes, you will be offended. <sighs> Hallelujah. So the calmness come. Hallelujah. So the word of God reveals the heart of God to us. And so it gives us strength. Right? The word of God reveals it. And then it gives us strength. And then it gives us boldness. Like, okay, I can overcome this too. Hallelujah. Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, fear not. Isaiah 41 verse 10. Fear not for I am with you. He said, be not be dismayed, for I am your God. Those who have made God, uh, the Lord, as their God, their personal savior. He said, fear not. Our mommy was saying this morning that when we serve him, he will bless our bread. Hallelujah. He will keep sicknesses away from us when we serve him. He will, we say, you will serve him, and I will do this. I will do this. And he said, fear not. I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. These are revelations. These are the word of God that we can throw back to him. I say, yes, you say you're going to strengthen me. I am here strengthening me. And you will be strengthened. God is not a man that he will fail. Hallelujah. I hope I'm building the courage of someone for this year already in Jesus' name. Amen. He said, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And I said, the right hand of the Lord dwelled violently. Right? Someone will say, if, if you hold on to the Lord, it's okay. But if God holds your hand, it's better. Because <laughs> when trouble comes... You know, <laughs> it's easier to just let go of God. But when God take hold of you, and he said, he says, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That's the word of God for us. That's strength for us. He said, he's with me all day. He's with me all night. He's my loving friend, my savior all the time. He's with me all day. He's with me all night. He's my loving friend, my savior all the time. The word of God guides us. We know that. Say so your word is a lamp unto my feet, right? And a light unto my path. So there's some things that we don't understand. But when you go into the word, the word of God is new every morning. He said, my word is not burdensome. It's not burdensome. It's not, uh, it, it, it's not a burden unto you. It is life. That's where we can get life. That's where we can get strength. That's where we become bold as a lion. So in order for me to see this vision, to be revived, to be empowered, to be bold, it is in the word of God. It is in the word of God. It brings joy. And how do I read the word of God? You know, maybe I should throw it out. How do you read the word of God? What is the formula that has helped you to read the word of God? Can anybody help us here? What is the formula that you're using that is helping you to read the word of God? Help me out. I, 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 like I said, I teach, I throw out questions. So sometimes it's not someone is teaching. <laughs> Hallelujah. So how, how, how do we read the word of God, Christians? Yes, help me out. Mommy? I know, but what, are, what, is, it, what is the formula you, have, you are using? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so we pray, but physically, what do you, how do you do it? We have to pray concerning, we, we need prayer to understand the word of God, to listen, and for God to reveal that word to us. Good, but how do you do it? Yes, ma'am. Studying. Yeah, that is really studying, right? Do we have a specific time? Or do we have a specific time we we'll set aside just to read the word of God, right? Uh, someone said, my husband always read the word of God from 2 a.m. And he will be reading a lot that I cannot sleep. I don't want it to be like that, too. <laughs> that you, you are disturbing everybody, right? He said he loves to read. But he reads it 2 a.m. That's when he reads the word of God. What is the time that we have separated to see what God is saying? Right? So we don't have to start with uh, reading long chapters. Right? We can start little by little. We can start with 30 minutes. Or sometimes it's exciting when you start with the Old Testament because I know we are all Christians here. And we know more about the New Testament. When you read those stories, you know, it energizes you. And like my sister said, you begin to, you know, interpret that into your own life. Read the word of God. And as the word of God is being interpreted to you, you write it down. And you begin to form your own sermon. You begin to form your own prayer, life, a prayer request unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, sir. You want to say something? Oh, Okay. So there are also some Bible that are called chronological Bible. They test from the dates and the sequence, you know, of, of, of how things happened, actually. Because what you're reading in Genesis, sometimes the first chronicle, second, they are all mixed up sometimes. So there's some Bibles that will tell you how things really happen from this date to this date. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Another way to help ourselves is have a partner. Right? Have a partner. To read the word of God. It could be your spouse, right? It could be your children that you wake up in the morning, right? And you'll be so excited. Sometimes when we wake up, in my household, we, we, we start praying by 6.37. Some, sometimes the children get so excited that, okay, say, okay, it's over, it's over, let's go. <laughs> you know, we begin to stir up their spirit, mind, and they begin to love the word of God. Hallelujah. So let us incorporate our children into our prayer life, uh, into our Bible reading. Let them read the word of God. Uh, set time. Do it small by small. The Lord will help you in Jesus' name. And rightly, like mommy said, right, pray. Asking the Lord, right, to give you that uh, heart that thirsts for his word. Right? The heart that thirsts for God, for God is fit. When we ask, we will receive. Right. Lastly, lastly, so we spoke about prayer. We spoke about uh, the word of God. I want to pray, but what will I pray uh, about? How do I pray the will of God for my life? Right. How do I receive this strength? It's in the word of God. And lastly, we talk about the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit. Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2 Isaiah 11, verse 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, from 9 to 10, and most uh, popularly that we know is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, from 4 to 9, right? 4 to 9, uh, okay, I'm going to read for 2 Corinthians from 10 to 11, it says, but God has revealed them to us through what? His Spirit. The things, we are spirit beings. We are not just of the flesh. And God is a spirit. How do we receive revelation is through the spirit. You know, let me give, this, this, this hand was so painful. And, uh, and it was just hurting. And you know when you have a wound, 
Every time that the wound is healing, that's the place that you will be hurting yourself the more. And I kept hurting this hand ever since, ever since. And it became so dark. And when it's getting ready to be healed again after, you know, doing my care care thing, again, I will hit the hand. And it was so painful. And so I slept one day. And the Holy Spirit said, take um, the spirit, this uh, alcohol, rubbing alcohol, right? And uh, use that. Ah, so I woke up. I used um, the alcohol, I poured on it, you know, and I, go, and I went. Then he came back again, he said, no. He said, put that hand in the alcohol for two, three minutes. And I, I, I said, <laughs> and I said, daddy, I said, I said, daddy, this is what God is telling me. He said, put that hand in this hand. The second time I did that, this thing dried completely. Even though I bang it now, I don't feel it. So the spirit of God, you know, God is a spirit. And he will come to you to tell you things that you need to know. Things that the doctor, maybe they can try, right? But beyond that, God will reveal it to you. Hallelujah. He says, so those things, they, they search the mind of God. The, your need when your spirit is connected with the spirit of God and will begin to search, Lord, how do I go about this? How do I do this? Because you are a spirit being, because you are serving him, the Lord will begin to speak to you. Hallelujah. He said, yes, the deep things of God, the understanding of the word of God, he will begin to interpret it to us. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. No one knows the Spirit of God except the Spirit of God. There is a spirit in man, the scripture said. And that spirit is the Spirit of God that lives in you and lives in me. Let us tear up that Spirit of God through prayer, through reading the Word of God, and through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, right? Isaiah 11, if you find it, you can please read. Isaiah 11, verse 2 is a scripture that we all know very well. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon you. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon me. We need the spirit of the Lord to rest upon us. And what are the spirits? He said they are the spirits of wisdom. The spirits of understanding. The spirits of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and the spirit of the fear of God. These tools we need very much in our life to work successfully in the year 2023. And the Lord will endow us with it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Please let us get up on our feet. And we're going to pray three prayers.